So I want to show everybody what it takes to get one of these buggies done. What we're doing right now is we're going over our final CC. I've got this list right here, and everything that is the color of orange has to be signed off before it goes to powder coat. It has everything listed in here, down to the nuts and bolts and all the little pieces, making sure that everything on this buggy is up to snuff for our quality. So the day before, when it's time to go to powder coat, we go through this list, and everybody gets a job task, and we get everything perfect. So when it gets back from powder coat, it meets our standards. got this thing back from powder coat and man i am super excited about this the panel color uh when we first got it i was like man i'm not 100 sure about this because it was like super bright and you didn't have any contrast or anything like that so um as we started to get this thing put together we realized man this is a hit check out that you can't tell me that that thing's not bad to the bone right there look at that Lowered the front end like we had talked about, three and a half inches. So now the shocks actually are just slightly taller than the tubing around it. Now we didn't change into the up travel like we said. It's just basically lowered on the axle. The shock has a little bit more angle to it. So from the front, you can see it's got a little bit more stance here in the front. Um, but the panel color, customer decided to go with full top panels all the way around. So we basically have inset panels throughout the whole top we've gone just about as far as we can go putting this together this is a culmination of a couple days worth of work um, because at this point we have outpaced the industry and we don't have an engine to go inside here usually it takes right about three months to get the engines built uh, just because of all the corona stuff and uh, some of the backlog and whatnot but um, you know, if we were to go ahead and put all four pans in and everything like that, we'd have to take everything back out to set the motor, transmission, transfer case, and all that stuff. All the parts are here, we're ready to rock, but this is a new addition uh, to our wiring. Check this out. So like every wire that's on this vehicle has a Deutsch connector, uh, fully waterproof. This is all 12 gauge wire, so way bigger than, I mean like normal wiring. Like 12 gauge is, unnecessary for what we're doing, but we just didn't want to have any problems uh, with the wires moving back and forth, breaking over time. Every wire is labeled ECU cooling right there. This is the main harness. It comes over to here. This is the switch harness and the switch harness is going to plug in right here next to the shifter and go down the cable tray. Now that switch harness plugs into this Deutsch connector just like this. Everything is nice and waterproof. And the cool thing about it is, if you had to pull your, your panel right here for any reason, um, whenever you go to pull the panel, it's just a quick disconnect right here. The panel comes out and then it goes off to the side and you can get right into whatever you need to work on, whether it's you know your shifter linkage or whatever. Put all this stuff back together, one plug, you're back in business. Uh, this is the tail harness. The tail harness has these Deutsch connectors that are all made for high amp. It runs right back here to the back. All three plugs sit right there. And they're already designed so that we have extra circuits in here. So this wire right here is for the radio. So if you want a radio, um, this wire is the one that's going to actually turn that radio on and off. This particular customer is getting the rugged radio system. So this wire right here is attached to this switch right here from the factory or from us, I guess I could say we are the factory. And this allows you to turn that on and off. And also if you wanted to just do like a regular sound system with some pod speakers or something, that wire right there is going to allow you to do that. It comes on all the harnesses, whether you have those options or not. So down the road, you can easily plumb something in. Same thing with these two wires. So these two wires are for supercharged and rear steer models. 
the tan is for a supercharger pump and you can see right here we already have the nut certs right here for the supercharger pump so if you buy a non-supercharged engine and then decide later on down the road that you want to go with a supercharger the wiring is already there we just tie it up if you have a naturally aspirated engine this is for rear steer so this dark brown wire is going to be what energizes your rear steer if you have a rear steer model um, if you don't get a rear steer model that's perfectly fine down the road if you decide to go to rear steer we can literally send you everything that it takes to do it and the wiring is already there for it here's the harness that goes back to the back this harness is super slick man i mean look at that it's got fuel pump power fuel pump ground trans cooler trans cooler ground all this runs in a bundle and then to make sure that our accessories all have good continuity between the positive and the ground all of your ground wires are over here in this little bundle and this little bundle on all of our chassis bolts in to this ground lug right here so this one goes to your accessory or all these accessories and then this one goes down to the battery everything is color coordinated so you don't have to worry about what wire goes where later on down the road if you ever have to do any looking into your wiring system you can sling a rock up and smash it or something like that all this stuff is color coordinated and we have a full wiring diagram for our buggies that allows you to do that this is your tail light harness and as you can tell we have three wires that means that you can not only have brakes and running lights but we also have this thing pre-wired for turn signals up here in the front so if you live in one of those states where um you know you can get away with it you can uh potentially wire this thing up for turn signals this is where the rear steer goes that's the rear steer uh, system that we have and the rear steer system has all of your diodes and all of your relays that controls the whole thing and this is all a waterproof box so it's nice and neat and then your rear steer pump sits there all of our models come with the rear steer um, brackets and everything there whether you have it or not so down the road if you wanted to add rear steer you could um, just wanted to kind of show you some of that stuff it's really cool being able to see these things come together 1550 big boy stuff down here 40 spline 1550 with our high steer knuckles these are uh, six bolt high steer knuckles with grade nine bolts and then our trailing arms got 25 inches of rear travel and then this gigantic spall fan right here that keeps this baby cool i can't wait to see this thing fully assembled <laughs> Here's the console out of the buggy. Check this out. Everything is super nice and neat. All your switches are already sitting here. You got your key switch. All of this wiring harness comes down to this plug right here. So you can easily take your whole entire console in and out. You got a rugged radios installed right over here. Got a tire wiring and stuff like that in. Flush mount plugs. Super professional. So if you're mad at the wiring in your buggy and you're sick of crappy wiring that doesn't work well and is always frayed, this is what you need right here. You need a busted knuckle buggy. Beautiful wiring. Big Deutsch connectors, everything ready to rock. All right, so let me show y'all some progress here, some of these updates. So we're trying to do as much as we can with the engine not being here, but you can see right here, we've got this fuel pressure regulator. This fuel pressure regulator uh, is a Holley unit. It's made by Mallory, who's you know owned by Holley. And we use this for our 427 stroker package. Um, our LS3 package um, has a Corvette filter that sits just outside the tank. It's one of the Corvette filters and regulators in one. But with our big engines, uh, we can't do that because it just doesn't flow enough. So this is the filter that we go with all the way up until we get into our blower packages. So we've got that situated um, right down here where our computer mount and everything else is. Got the brake lines going. 
Um, that's the um, the switch that controls all of your rear tail lights and all that stuff, your brake lights and all. Uh, this is the rear steer reservoir, so we've got it in. Already got the plumbing sitting on it, just kind of waiting for the engine to get here so we can route it. Um, back here you can see we've got the center console in, the shifter and all that stuff ready to rock. Um, you can see the wiring is starting to take shape back here like we had talked about before. Nice and neat, everything is routed in this really nice um, cable tray and we've got holes here so that we can actually take this, this hose and hold it over uh, against the side when we're all said and done. So it basically will get, um, you know, pulled over to the side nice and neat. We've got this clamp um, that we were talking about before that allows you to basically just unplug the entire center console and take it out as one unit. Um, we've got a rear steer sitting here, nice and neat. We're about to run this wiring and everything over here to the joystick, which actually bolts in on the left-hand side of the shifter. Got a rugged radios kit inside here. And uh, I wanted to show you some of this. This is pretty cool. This is our rock light kit. Um, this rock light kit is from Infinite Off-Road and we've been using these guys for a while. Um, and the way these work is pretty cool. You basically have these little connections like this. And if you wanna add more rock lights, all you have to do is just plug into that and then split the signal because they're very, very low amperage. You can run just tons. I, you'd, you'd have to get ridiculous to run out of the amount of amperage that you can you know, run through those wires and still run those LEDs. But um, that's what it looks like. Um, we're gonna tie into that little bundle right there. That'll all get tied up nice and neat and then run the rock lights up to the front. You can see our Deutsch connectors all sit right here, uh, just past the cup holders for the rear tail harness. And that rear tail harness is basically from here back in the buggy, everything electrical. And then from there forward, uh, the, the wiring harness is split into two separate pieces. But check out these um, really cool lights that I uh, wanted to show you. So these are what the lights look like. They're magnetic and they literally just set on the frame rail and you would think that that would just knock off if you were like pressure washing or something but they are super strong and they definitely don't have that problem uh, we get another led light that sits right back here in the back and shines down on top of the axle assembly uh, rear steer these are our sensors and everything for our rear steer kit um, it's gonna be really slick when it's all said and done we're pretty excited about this one over here we're starting to get our shifter assembly and everything installed you can see the rugged radios kit has a button that goes on the dashboard. So if you're um, with one of our other buggies that has the same kit, whenever you're cruising around, you can hit this button, it'll call out to the other buggy. So you'll be able to actually hear what you guys are doing. You can have a conversation. If you don't hit the button, you just talk back and forth with your passenger. So this right here is just the intercom system. This is how you play your Bluetooth music. You can put your cell phone inside here, listen to Bluetooth music, takes phone calls and all that stuff. And then this is your two-way radio, and that actually will send a signal out to another vehicle by pushing this button. Uh, we've got that going in. You can see how the entire drivetrain actually hangs off of this piece of tubing. Basically, the tubing comes down here to this point, comes up, goes across the top, and then we've got our two bushings inside here, and the drivetrain actually hangs off the top. So what we're working on now is getting the shifters and everything installed um, and drive shafts and all that stuff ready to go. We've got shift linkage. I mean, we're, we're just about as far as we can go with this. This is our computer mount. Um, it actually has the ability to hold uh, six different computers. So you've got two different Holly computers. You've got the Dominator, then you've got the Terminator. And it's um, if you run a drive-by wire or a drive-by cable, this bracket will allow you to bolt those two computers up and then there are actually uh, three different GM computers that we can bolt inside here, all of these different bolt hole patterns. And there's one more that I can't think of that I designed for this, but uh, it's a really cool universal mount for a bunch of different computers that goes right there. And as you can see, everything is starting to take shape. Look at how clean plumbing's coming out. We've got these uh, really nice cable trays that allow us to take your plumbing, run it down safely away from the exhaust, which is something that a lot of people don't think about is like the overall build process and how you're gonna route everything. You know, your exhaust comes off the engine and runs down on the left-hand side and right-hand side of the buggy. Well, a lot of people will run their plumbing and wiring right there with the exhaust and everything, but we, we know that that's a heat source and a, and a potential area that you could have some type of ignition. So we always take our um, 
our plumbing and wiring and we immediately come off of the accessory, come up to the center console and run everything down so it's as far away from the exhaust as possible. Um, when you get underneath here, you can kind of see, you can kind of see right here. So the exhaust is sitting here and then you've got that rear steer that sits right there and then way up over there, actually on the other side of this floor pan is where your transmission line is at. So everything is separated really well um, to help you know mitigate the amount of fire potential that you could have out of a vehicle like this um lots of design work goes into these things man lots of thought process so we've been waiting for a pretty good while on these engines uh they finally showed up there's obviously covid delays all over the place and whatnot but it is something cool to see three 635 horsepower ls 427s all land on the load now that's 1900 horsepower just landed on the loading dock how sweet is that check this thing out So this is the beginning of day three. So what was it, Tuesday? Tuesday yep. we got our engines in, right? Tuesday yep. afternoon, um, swapped all the guts over on the oil pans and all that stuff. And then got the motors set down and basically bolted in Tuesday afternoons. Wednesday, got uh, exhaust all routed, um, plumbing and everything pulled over the top of the motor, all the electronics and stuff pulled on top of the motor. And here it is the morning of Thursday, and we've got this engine just about buttoned up. We're just getting the last little pieces routed down through here so that we've got uh, a nice clean engine bay. You can see everything's getting pulled down. That means in the next couple hours, we should have uh, the engine um, cover sitting inside here, and then we'll start buttoning up the interior. And as soon as the interior gets buttoned up, we start putting fluids inside, and this dude should be running this afternoon. What's the current situation, Dick? Nine, late, 9 30. 9 30 on a Thursday, yeah. Thursday night. Yeah, making dreams happen. We're uh we're basically uh putting this exhaust on and you know we're having to use headers or we, we like to use headers that are pre-built so we don't have to build all the headers, but we have to cut off that flange right there and then turn it really sharp and then turn it and go back down to make sure that we clear the dry shaft. And the only reason it's so difficult is because we have a lot of up travel in our chassis, which a lot of guys don't. A lot of guys take the cheap route. They put 14 inch shocks in the front, give you about five or six inches of up travel, and the exhaust is super easy. But here, we're wanting a lot of up travel with 16 inch shocks, so the dry shaft comes up really high, and we have to dodge it with this exhaust. It's really tough. All right, we are 95% done with this buggy. We've got the customer coming to pick this thing up tomorrow, and we are down to the last little bit of things that we gotta get done. Now check this out. We've got a QC list, and this QC list has everything in here that we need for this buggy to be signed, sealed, and delivered so we know that it's a quality product. And we are just about done with everything. The brakes are bled. There's fuel in it. We got engine oil in it. We've got diff fluid in it we got to put steering fluid in it still tidy up a few panels a little bit of wiring but this is the only thing that we've got going on right now and i want to show you all how sad this is that stupid bolt on the way in galled and now it's stuck it won't go in it won't go out rear view mirror bolt can you believe that that's the only thing that's left. We literally have everything under control except for the rear view mirror bolt. I think we're doing pretty good when it comes down to the wire and that's the only problem we got, but check that out. I don't know what to say about it other than we're gonna have to fix that. 
because we can't go four wheeling without a rear view mirror. All right, well, it's Friday, it's midnight, and we just finished up with this bad to the bone buggy. Check this thing out. So I want to tell you a little bit about this project that I have sitting behind me. This guy is somebody who I've known for a pretty long time. He's a good friend of ours and uh, he basically started wanting a new buggy after he was at a fair and was trying to race and he hit a jump and he landed and he actually broke his back. And it was kind of keeping him out of the off-road scene for a little while, you know, he was hurt and you know, after that he started working on a few other things and had a buggy fire and basically just got into that same spot a lot of people get into where they need a new machine, something that is got the ride quality that you would expect from a 2021 machine, something that just is a top-notch machine that you can go out and have more fun with. So he contacted me a little while ago and said, you know what, Jake, I think it's time to you know take a ride in the buggy and, and see what these things have to offer. So he came down, we jumped in the shop buggy, we took him for a ride, and he could not be more impressed. It was amazing to see him react to the suspension quality and the way that the new buggies are driving. It is completely different from the old school technology that he came from. So by the time we got to the bottom of the hill and I looked over at him, he was smiling from ear to ear and he said, oh yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have me one of these. So we came back up to the top, we started figuring out what he wanted, and we knew that this buggy had to be super bright, super bold, because that's the way his personality is. So we knew this buggy needed to be over the top because this guy's nickname is Mouth, and you don't get the nickname Mouth by being an introvert. He's the type of guy who's always laughing and cutting up, and he's the life of the party and everything else, so we knew a couple of things had to happen. One, we had to have bright colors. He picked out some of the brightest colors I've ever seen, and I'm telling you, you've got to wear sunglasses whenever you're in this thing or around it because it's just so bright. It's really, really cool, and the contrast is great. We knew we needed a good size motor, right? So we went with a 427 stroker. It's 630 horsepower, which is way more than he's had before in the past because on those days he likes to get pretty rowdy. We knew we wanted to make this thing sing. The next thing we did was went with rear steer. He hasn't had rear steer before in the past, but definitely is the type of driver who can handle it. He's the guy who's been out there four wheeling for many, many years and just needed a machine that had all the little bells and whistles to put him over the top. Then we went with rock lights. The rock lights go all the way around the buggy. We've got four little magnetic rock lights front and rear, and then we have the strips on the bottoms. And that allows him to change the different colors to kind of go with the music or change it to different colors whenever he's at a car show or something like that. It's got heated seats inside this thing. This thing is really cool because it has just all the little creature comforts that you would expect from one of our builds. Because of his back injury, we knew that we had to have something that was gonna ride good, that he could show off and, and go to that, that final edge, just push the machine to the absolute limits and not have any discomfort. So we've got bypass shocks all the way around in this machine and trailing arms in the rear with 25 inches of travel. And I can tell you from experience, this machine rides like none other. This is the first 2021 model that we have that came off of our line. And as you can see by looking at it, it has a lot lower front end. It's three and a half inches lower, but the key is we were able to do that without sacrificing any suspension travel whatsoever. We just moved the mounts around and kind of played with the tubing. So it has the same ride quality that you would expect from our machines, but better visibility. I am so excited for this build. I'm telling you, we've been waiting and waiting and waiting on some engines. They finally came in. We've got this thing done and we cannot wait for him to show up. And actually, he's supposed to be here in about an hour. And we're going to take it to Stony Lonesome and see what this thing can do. Is it badass? Oh, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's about as badass as badass gets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Tell me that's not bad. Hey, it's a bone. Oh, oh, my God. That's freaking what I'm always doing. God, that is. Dude, that pops so hard, man. Like, it pops so hard. Wow. That is freaking awesome. 
I believe it matches your personality. I think it does. <laughs> so here it is. That's what I wanted to look like right there. This is your owner's manual. So it has everything in it from start to finish on how to operate, which you've had budget before. Yeah. But it's got the full making log and all that stuff in it. It's got exactly how to how to type the stuff up, specs on everything, all your oils, volume, the whole nine. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Dang. I'm going to get them like down. There you go. Man. <laughs> yes. You can see how good, can't oh, you? Oh, it's perfect. Oh, it's perfect. Awesome. I love it. That totally changed right there, it, uh, man. It, it, it totally. It drops it down. It makes it so you can see a little better coming out. And the panels and stuff up there in the top, they came out really good too, man. Oh, yeah. I love them. Because you're the first person with, with full panels throughout the whole top. Right. Yeah. It makes a big difference, man. I like the full pattern. Yeah. I do too. I mean, if you're, out if you're like in a race or something like that, you can pop these out so you can kind of see up the hill. Right. But trail riding, dude, leave those things on for some shade. Uh, you got the key. Got Fire the key. up. Fire up. Just turn the key and then the button. Yeah, turn the key and then you hit the button. Just like, yep. Just hold it down. Such a low cut. Sounds man, that so is freaking awesome. awesome. It's got bass to it. Freaking you know? awesome. here at Stony Lonesome doing our shakedown run. I'm playing cameraman today so Nick's gonna drive the shot buggy up some of these ledges and uh, Josh is gonna drive his buggy. It's been raining for literally like two months straight here. Literally it only has stopped raining for maybe a couple days. So everything is really muddy except for the top trails basically the top of the mountain so we're gonna try our best to stay up here and uh, keep the mud off our rigs.
So how was your first day? Man, freaking awesome. You like it? Freaking awesome. All right, tell me a little bit about the suspension. Oh, just unbelievable. Yeah, what about the stability? Compared to what I was in before, now it's no comparison. No comparison, no huh? No comparison. Man. So you would highly recommend? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Did you, you have fun? If you want to have fun, get you one of these. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's unbelievable, man. We, I mean, we hit some stuff and that I would have never thought to even you know go for in that other one you know without risk being risky this thing man just walked right up it. like it's nothing yeah yeah it's unbelievable heck so, yeah dude i love it